a gracious good day to one and all once again. Tis I, Norton the First, by grace of God, Emperor of the United States, and Protector of Mexico, back with you once again for episode number 66 of Emperor Norton's fantastic history vlog. Today is June 10, 2020. It is our 87th day of a shelter in place order here in San Francisco. Now, we did not do a vlog yesterday and we apologize for that, but every once in a while we are going to need to take a day off. We were, the Countess and I that is, were out inspecting the coastal provinces yesterday, all enclosed within a vehicle, just the two of us. We wore our masks and we have to say that for the most part, we were pleased with the wearing of masks and social distancing that we saw on our journey. So the reports are mostly good from the Empire this morning. Well, let's get into our national days. Uh, June 9 was Donald Duck Day. You'll understand in a little while. It was also National Strawberry Rhubarb Day. We know our friend Andra made uh, some lovely items with that yesterday. Oh, that cobbler looked good, Andra. Save some for us. And also Bill and Ted Day, most excellent. Uh, I saw the preview for the new Bill and Ted movie the other day, and although I poo-pooed it for a long time, this one actually looks like it might be good. Who knows? We'll see if the movie theaters ever reopen. Uh, June 10th, National Ballpoint Pen Day. Aren't we looking at these? Also, Herb and Spice Day and National Iced Tea Days today. So have an iced tea or listen to iced tea, which, whichever works best for you. Yes. Well, let's get into our highlights from local history today. As usual, we are relying on John Ralston's book, This Date in San Francisco, because on June 9, 1851, the first committee of vigilance had formed. When James Marshall found the gold nugget at Sutter Mill on, Sutter's Mill on the American River in January 1848, there were probably 800 people in San Francisco. A year later, according to the Annals of San Francisco, there were about 2,000 by spring 1849, probably 3,000 by summer, about 5,000. Along with the thousands of gold seekers who poured in, there were get-rich-quick artists, swindlers, and violent criminals. In particular, one was the Sydney Ducks, which was a gang of criminals originally from Sydney, Australia, but they got sent here and they burned the city down a number of times trying to rob houses that were vacant by people leaving them to put out the fires. Uh, long, long history of that. Uh, think about that though now. Sydney was of course, well, Australia in general, was a penal colony where uh, the UK sent their worst criminals. These guys were so bad, they got kicked out of Australia and sent here. Well, on June 9, 1851, a group led by Sam Brannan, among others, formed the nucleus of what would be called the Vigilantes. And here's their proclamation, or part of it at least, declaring it. Whereas, sounds like my mind, doesn't it? I was actually a member of the Vigilance Committee, by the way. Whereas it has become apparent to the citizens of San Francisco that there is no security for life and property either under the regulations of society as it, as it present exists or under the law as now administered, therefore, the citizens whose names are hereunto attached do unite themselves into an association for the maintenance of peace and good order of society and the preservation of lives and properties of the citizens of San Francisco. Uh, there would, of course, be a second vigilance committee. There was a lot of distrust of the police as well, that they were not able to do the job of keeping the city peaceful. So that's why the vigilance committees came together. Uh, read more about that. There's a number of good books on that subject. Uh, that we, uh, If anybody wants to, just shoot us an email or leave a comment, and we will refer you to those books. Of course, the Annals of San Francisco books are amazing as well. They're, they're long, but they're definitely worth reading. Also, on June 9, 1868, was the first meeting of the Board of Regents of the University of California. And on June 10th, 1954, the public broadcasting system reaches San Francisco 
when KQED Channel 9 starts broadcasting. Well, let's get into our events for the last two days. Uh, June 9 in the year 68, Roman Nero Emperor commits suicide, imploring his secretary to slit his throat to evade a Senate-imposed death by flogging. 1869, Charles E. Heyer sells his first root beer in Philadelphia. 1924, Jelly Roll Blues is recorded by the great Jelly Roll Morton. 1934, Wyatt's Donald Duck Day is his first appearance in a cartoon, The Wise Little Hen. So let's see, uh, 66 and 20, 86 years old today. Happy birthday, Donald Duck. I don't do an imitation, don't even ask. 1954, June 9, Joseph Welch asks U.S. Senator Joseph McCarthy, have you no sense of decency, sir, during the Senate Army hearings? Hmm. Might be applicable today. In 1958, Sheb Woolley's Purple People Eater hits number one. Let's see, one-eyed, one-armed, Flying Purple People Eater, I believe is how that went. And on 2014, Laverne Cox becomes the first transgender person to appear on the cover of Time magazine. Let's get on to June 10th. 1692, the first victim of the Salem witch trials, Bridget Bishop, is hanged for witchcraft in the colony of Massachusetts. 1720, Mrs. Clements of England markets the first paste-style mustard. 1752, Benjamin Franklin tests the lightning conductor with his kite-flying experiment. Of course, we know that Benjamin Franklin is the only president of the United States never to be president of the United States. 1845, Andrew Jackson's African gray parrot, Paul, is removed from his funeral for swearing at the Hermitage, Tennessee. Funeral attendee William Menefi Normant records, quote, Before the sermon and while the crowd was gathering, a wicked parrot that was a household pet got excited and commenced, commenced swearing so loud and long as to disturb the people and had to be carried from the house. Of course, if you saw our episode about our pets, you know that we live with an African gray parrot who is quite talkative. Oh, we're getting a little wind. Hopefully the wind noise will not be too bad, but you can hear the wind chimes. Anyway, Moses is our African gray parrot, and yes, she is quite talkative. Yes, Moses is a she, but we thought Moses was a he, uh, and that's when she got her name. So we're not changing it, because that's what she recognizes. She's quite a parrot, as you might have seen. On with other events of June 10th, 1933. John Dillinger robs his first bank in New Carlisle, Ohio. He takes $10,600. 1966, Janis Joplin's first live concert at the Avalon Ballroom here in San Francisco. 1977, Apple Computer ships its first Apple II. Of course, being a Bay Area company, we are very proud of them. We have been an Apple user since about 19... 90 and constantly ever since this uh, vlog is done entirely on an iPhone including the editing and our first computer was an Apple IIc a wonderful computer my dad uh, 1985 Coca-Cola announces they're bringing back their 99 year old formula Coca-Cola Classic oh what a marketing debacle that was or was it was it all done deliberately we'll never know 2007 on this date, the Sopranos series finale on HBO, the infamous cut to black ending. I got onion rings for the table. Let's get into our births today. June 9, Cole Porter, begin the begin. 1915, guitarist, one of the pioneers of electric guitaring, incredible guitarist, Les Paul. 1916, former Secretary of State Robert McNamara. 1961, Michael J. Fox, who is doing such wonderful work on Parkinson's research. If you are not familiar with the Michael J. Fox Foundation, uh, check it out, make a donation. They're doing great, great work. We are part of a Parkinson's study. Uh, we do not have Parkinson's, but family members have, and we have one genetic marker out of the possible six for it, so we are involved in a long-term long Parkinson's disease study. 
If you uh, have a family history of that, uh, check out the Michael J. Fox Foundation. They will give you a link to the study, and it's uh, a very great thing to do. Where was I? Oh, in 1963, Johnny Depp, what a great actor. Of course, the definitive Hunter Thompson in, in my mind, at least. And 1981, another actor, Natalie Portman. June 10th, let's move on. 1895, Hattie McDaniel, the first African-American actress to win an Oscar as for playing Mammy in Gone with the Wind. You know, she wanted to be buried at Hollywood Cemetery, but the prejudice of the time would not allow that. She was buried elsewhere, but there is now a cenotaph at Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Check it out if you ever go there, which we recommend doing. We're going to come back to Hollywood Forever in just a moment. Uh, 1901, uh, Frederick Lowe, the composer from My Fair Lady and Camelot. 1910, Alan Wolfe. 1921, Philip Mountbatten. You may not know him as that, but perhaps as Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, and consort to Queen Elizabeth II. She's 90, no, he is 99 today. Uh, 1922, Francis Gum. You know her better as Judy Garland. And that's another reason to go to Hollywood forever because she is now buried there in uh, a beautiful crypt. Uh, we went there a couple of years ago and it's really something special to see. 1928, Maurice Sendak, the wonderful illustrator, Where the Wild Things Are. 1933, celebrity lawyer F. Lee Bailey. And uh, 2001, Sasha Obama. Happy birthday, 19 today. Get into our deaths, June 9, Charles Dickens, the author, 1993, actor Alexis Smith, 2000, or artist George Siegel, not the actor, the artist, 2017, Batman, Adam West, he was quite a character, uh, June 10, 323 BC, Alexander the Great, I don't think he was all that great, 1926, the architect, artist, Antoni Gaudi, 1941, Marcus Garvey, Jamaican-born black nationalist who began the Back to Africa movement. Uh, 1967, actor, award-winning, Oscar award-winning actor, Academy Award, Spencer Tracy. 1976, uh, film pioneer Adolf Zukor. 1982, director Rainier Fassbinder. 1994, artist Edward Keenholz, scul sculptor. 2002, gangster John Gotti. And 2004, Ray Charles. Well, that wraps it up for today. Until we see you again, stay safe, stay inside. If you go outside, though, wear a mask and uh, keep to your car. Don't socialize closely with people. Uh, it's always a good idea. Keep your social distance. Uh, don't take unproven cures, please. I uh, saw a very disturbing report that after uh, a speech by the supposed leader of the United States, uh, not a speech, but a statement. Uh, People have been drinking bleach and putting it on their skin. Don't do that. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, be kind to one another. That's very important. Black Lives Matter. And until we see you again, a gracious good day.